we thank the Lord because we are alive. And because we are alive, we are created to fulfill the purpose of God for our lives, which is to bring glory to his name. We are starting a new series today. And I want to thank you for your concern and your love for the teachings you have been hearing through this medium. I welcome you to the glorious hour of the Apostolic Church, Lokoja area, Lona Territory. Today, as I've said, we are going to start a new series on building a solid family. Building a solid family. And we are going to take you into the different segments of family, marriage problems, and how you can be victorious. May the Lord bless you as you listen. In Jesus' name. Father, we bless you because you are God. And as we go into this series, we dedicate everything to you, that you will take the glory, so that each family will be a Christian family. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Building a strong Christian family. Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Malachi, chapter 2. I want to read from verse 13 to 16. And this is the second thing you do. You cover the altar of the Lord with tears, with weeping and crying. So, he does not regard the offering anymore, nor receive it with good will from your hands. Yet you say, For what reason? Because the Lord has been witness between you and the wife of your youth, with whom you have dealt treacherously. Yet she is your companion and your wife by covenant. But did he not make them one, having the remnant of the Spirit? And why one? He seeks godly offspring. Therefore, take heed to your spirit, and let not deal treacherously with the wife of his youth. For the Lord God of Israel says that he hates divorce. For it covers one's garment with violence, says the Lord of hosts. Therefore, take heed to your spirit, that you do not deal treacherously. If there is any cause for concern in any area of our lives today, it is in the area of marriage. And marriage... It's an institution of God. The idea was is. The implementation was is. And so, God had a lot to say about marriage. Today, by the grace of God, we will take you into the different stages of marriage. We are beginning with how you can choose a good life partner. You are going to see in this teaching the purpose of God for you. In the passage I've just read to you, the Bible says God was accusing his people 
that they were covering the altar of the Lord with tears, with weeping and crying. There are many people today, marriage has come, has become a woe for them. Something God created for mutual enjoyment has been turned to an experience of bitterness. This is not the will of God. The Bible went further to say, they cried, but God would not listen. Your attitude to marriage will determine whether God will answer your prayers or not. And that is why we are so much concerned that you should know the right meaning of marriage. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7, Husbands, likewise, dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel, and as being ears together of the grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered. The Bible says, lack of proper understanding, lack of proper execution of the principles of marriage, can lead to your prayers being blocked, being hindered. You look at many people today, they work very hard, they are very educated, they were zealous, filled with dynamism, but nothing is working in their favor. The problem is not with the witches. The problem is not with the wizards. The problem is not with the family enemy. The problem is wrong handling of marital matters. God wants you to understand certain things concerning marriage. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 13, I want to read verse 11. For as the church clings to the waist of a man, so I have caused the whole house of Israel and the whole house of Judah to cling to me, says the Lord, that they may become my people for renown, for praise, and for glory, but they will not hear. This is God's ideal marriage. He intends marriage for something important that you will be his people for the renown of God, for the praise of God, and for his glory. It is my duty as a servant of God to lead you into these intricacies so that you can enjoy a good marriage. Let's now begin. How do you choose a marriage partner? When you are created by God, He created you in order for you to have relationship with Him. Marriage is purely a matter of relationship. If you don't understand what relationship means, you cannot understand marriage. And where there is no relationship, there cannot be love, there cannot be trust. And where all these things are absent, even though you claim to be married, that marriage is already mad. In order to simplify it for you, I have divided this thing into six portions. That means six questions you need to ask yourself before you go into marriage. Number one, am I ripe and ready for marriage? Note two was there, ripe and ready. 
You can be ripe and not be ready. And you can be ready and not be ripe. What do I mean by ripe? That means you are matured. You have the experience of life. You know what you are going into. You are prepared. What do I mean by being ready? That means you have the wherewithal to meet the financial needs of marriage. These two you must understand well if you are not going to have a cleavage in your marriage. When you turn to the book of Genesis, chapter 2, I want to read from verse 18 to 22. Genesis, chapter 2, 18 to 22. And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him an helper comparable to him. Out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. So Adam gave names to all cattle, to the bears of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper comparable to him. And the Lord God caused the deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs, and closed up the flesh in his place. Then the rib, which the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. Now, in this passage, you are going to see clearly that marriage is not for boys, but for men. The Bible made it clear here that this man was alone. And because he was alone, certain things were not going well with him. Until you are married, the full purpose of God for your life cannot be fulfilled. Get that right. Number two. God says he must create another person. But how did he do it? He caused Adam to have a deep sleep. Marriage is fit for people who have deep reflection. Marriage is not just something you wake up one day and say, I want to be married this year. I want to be married next month. Marriage is for people who have deep thoughts. And the Bible said God operated upon Adam. Marriage is for people who are ready to experience pains. If you are not ready to experience pains, you are not ready for marriage. And God says, God took a rib, and with that he formed the woman. And that is where we are now going. God brought somebody out of Adam and gave it back to Adam. You need the divine intervention of God to be able to locate your own rib wherever he or she is. It's very important. It was not Adam who decided on which rib to be taken. In fact, he was, he was asleep. He did not even know what was going on. Everything was arranged by God. My dear listener, there is no way you can leave God out of your marriage and expect to be at peace. So, as I've told you, ask yourself the question, am I ripe? Do I have the maturity? Do I have what it takes, the patience, 
to live with a man. The patience to live with a woman. Do I have it? Am I ripe? Am I able to handle delicate situations within my roof without the intervention of others outside? Can I solve problems on my own? You know, it's just like when you are employed in a factory or in an office. Your promotion will be faster if you can work without little or no supervision. The same thing in marriage. If you are the type who cannot solve little domestic problems, everything you need to go out and seek the help of the third person for the solution of the problem, you are not yet ripe for marriage. Are you ready? Do you have the financial means? A house to live in. It may not be a whole flat, but at least you can have your personal room, a room and a parlor, or a flat if so, so that you can stay with your wife. Because the Bible says, for this reason shall a man leave his father and mother, and the two of them will come together. God wants you to be separate with your wife. The idea of living in a family house with your wife is a wrong beginning. Because you will be influenced. You will not be able to develop your own character. You will not be able to study your wife, study your husband independently. You will be forced to depend upon the decision of other people. So are you ready for marriage? Do you have the necessary ingredients, the housing, good employment, uninterrupted source of money to maintain yourself, to take care of your wife, to take care of your home, the beddings and everything. Is very important. Am I ripe and ready? You need to. Question number two. Ask yourself, do I merely like or really love this person? There is a world of difference between liking somebody and loving somebody. Likeness has to do with external qualities. Something you see in other people, which you appreciate. As long as those things are there, you are for that man, you are for that woman. But when they are not there, no. That is mere likeness. It can fade away with time. But when you talk of loving, it has to do with accepting the person as he or she is. You accept you are not tolerating the person. No, you accept the personality of that individual as he or she is. That is love. And it is sacrificial. This type of love is sacrificial. You need to settle. Many of the youths, they fall into the error of liking somebody and describing it as loving somebody. When what you appreciate in an individual is not there, maybe money, maybe intelli intelligence, or beauty, when it is no longer there, you will not want to continue with such a man. But when you love, you are dealing with the personality not with issues. You are dealing with personality. I want you to come with me to second book of Samuel. Second Samuel chapter 13. I want to read verses 1 and 2. After this, Absalom, the son of David, had a lovely sister whose name was Tamar. And Amnon, the son of David, loved her. 
Amnon was so distressed over his sister Tamar that he became sick. For she was a virgin. And it was improper for Ammon to do anything to her. When you read between the lines, you will see that Amnon here did not love Tamar. He merely liked her. Because he wanted to get something from her. He wanted to taste her. That was all. So be very careful. When you want to choose a life partner, don't base it on external qualities alone. Make sure you are not misinterpreting likeness for loving. It is very, very important. When you look into this situation in the passage that I've quoted to you, after Amnon has satisfied himself, after he had tasted Tamar, the Bible said he hated her more. That's why you need to be very careful. Settle the question in your mind, do I merely like this boy or this girl? Or do I really love this man or this woman? It's very important. Three, am I ready to live with this person till death? Am I ready to live with this person till I die? Settle that question in your mind. If you are not ready to live with somebody until you die, it is not good for you to go into marriage with such a person. It is not good. God wants you to be together forever. He wants you to be together forever. So, you need to settle that question. Am I ready to live with this person till death? Today we have treated about three questions now. And I want you to follow me in this series as we shall be taking it step by step. But I want to pause here now. I want you to, to consider what I've told you today. Am I ripe and ready for marriage? You understand what it means to be ripe? You are matured? Are you ready? Do you have the necessary wear with that? Do I merely like or really love this person? It's very important. Am I re ready to live with this person till death? Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for what we are able to do today. And we are praying that as we shall continue in the next edition, that you will open our understanding so that marriage will be a source of joy and not a source of woe. Thank you because you have done it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome. We are continuing with our teaching on building a solid Christian family. We are going to question number four. Am I ready to pay any necessary sacrifice for this person's salvation? This is the first, uh, fourth question you need to ask yourself before you go into marriage. Am I ready to pay any necessary sacrifice for this person's salvation? You see, marriage is designed by God as a vehicle of salvation. God wants you and your husband to end up in the kingdom of God because you are God's children. 
Why this is so, you will see later. Because there are certain problems that will come your way in marriage, which, if you are not careful, can make you to lose heaven. So, right away from the beginning, ask yourself, am I ready to pay any necessary sacrifice for this person's salvation? Whatever it will cost me in this marriage, I will not allow the devil to take away the salvation of my husband or the salvation of my wife. Both of us will make heaven. You must settle that question in your mind right away from the beginning. I want to read from the book of Romans. The book of Romans, chapter 14. Book of Romans, chapter 14, and verse 19. Romans 14, 19. Therefore, let us pursue the things which make for peace, and the things by which one may edify another. Before you enter into marriage, understand this verse. Be ready to make the necessary sacrifice for the salvation of your husband-to-be or your wife-to-be. Question number five. Am I ready to submit to this person? There are many of us who jumped into marriage without settling this question. And you know, there can be no two captains in a ship. Where there is no submission, as you are going to see later on, we are going to have problems. So before you enter into marriage, ask yourself, am I ready to submit to this person? The Bible says in Amos chapter 3, verse 3, can two people walk together except they be agreed? There must be agreement. There must be conviction. There must be readiness to submit, not with force, but voluntarily. We are going to read from the Bible, Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 21. And there you are going to see that this submissiveness is not a one-sided affair at all. The Bible says, submitting to one another in the fear of God. There are some people who have the erroneous belief that it is always the woman who must always submit to the man. It is not the teaching of the word of God. Submission is from the two sides. The Bible says, submitting one to another in the fear of God. And then it now started to address them, why submit to your own husband as to the Lord. And he concluded that all of you, husband, wife, submit one to another. If you have not mastered the principles and lessons of submission, your marriage will hit rocks. It's very important that you understand this. Are you ready to submit? When your wife asks a better view, are you ready? When your husband has a better view, are you ready to submit as a wife? Set to it before you go into marriage. Question number six. Am I ready to take this person as he or she is? That's just it. There are certain situations in marriage I mean character traits, which you cannot change. You can try, but you will not succeed. Or let me say, you will not be totally successful in changing it. Imagine a man of 35 years or 39 years before entering into a relationship. A girl of 20, 25 or 28, entering into marriage. The two of them have imbibed 
certain character traits, certain view of life, certain way of doing things. It will not be easy for you when the two of you come together to form one line at the same time. It may take time and it may not even be possible. So, ask yourself, am I ready to take this person as he or she is? When you look into your Bible, there are people who in our own terminology today, we can say they are mismated. Take Abigail, an intelligent woman who went and married a fool called Nabal. You need to understand these things so that when you get into marriage, you are prepared. Not by your own power, not by your own strength, but you are ready to cast your cares upon God. So that God, as the author, will be able to lead you correctly. Now we now want to talk about a godly woman. God formed women from the ribs of men and brought her to man. As I've read it to you in Genesis chapter 2, verses 21 to 23. Therefore, married women need wisdom and patience to build a good home. Married women, they need wisdom. They need patience to build a good home. Somebody says, it is with wisdom that a woman builds a home, and that is scriptural. But a woman who is self-willed, a self-willed woman would destroy her own house. In Yoruba, we say, Ogba lafi koli, tino minimu she lafin tuka. A woman who is self willed will succeed in destroying her own house. That is why you need to be nurtured. In the word of God, using biblical principles to formulate, to guide every decision in your family. Because as I've told you, marriage was God's idea. He introduced it. It was not Adam's idea. It was God's idea. If you buy any mechanism now, you need to study the handbook if you want the best result. The same thing with marriage. The Bible is the handbook from God, which when you study it, you will be able to understand. I want you to turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 15. I want to read from verse 25 to 28 for you to know the importance of patience in your marriage. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O oh, woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that hour. Here was a woman who came to the Lord Jesus Christ for a burning issue. And you know what? She ran into troubled waters. Insult were hauled at her. She was likened to a dog. And this woman took everything. She was patient. And with her patience and wisdom 
in the way she spoke, Jesus gave her what she requested. Woman, you are going into a different family altogether, a different setup altogether. You need all the wisdom in the world and the patience for you to be successful. You cannot overemphasize this important issue of wisdom and patience. We are going to speak more on it. You need tact and total dependence on God to protect your family. I am talking of a godly woman. If you are going to have a successful marriage, you need tact and total dependence upon God. You need common sense, which they say is not common. You know, there are certain things which if you know how to undo them properly, it will not develop into chaotic situation in your family. In the book of Exodus, chapter 2, from verse 1 to 4. Exodus chapter 2, 1 to 4. There we read the story of Moses. It says, And a man of the house of Levi went and took a wife, a daughter of Levi. So the woman conceived and bore a son, and when she saw that he was a beautiful child, she hid him three months. But when she could no longer hid him, she took an ark of the bulrushes for him, dubbed it with asphalt and pitch, put the child in it, and laid it in the reeds by the river's bank. And his sister stood afar off to know what would be done to him. That is marriage for you as a woman. There are times you will face Great difficulties that will be beyond human solution. And you need to put your Moses on the borosis, depending on God for a solution. That is why you as a woman, you need to understand this. Your husband must be protected like Moses was protected. And you cannot do it without the help of God. So, I now want to talk about women and their husbands. Number one, give your husband unconditional respect. Note this, unconditional respect. A man can take many things from you, but not disrespect. The moment you did not give your husband the desired respect, there is no way you can get through to that man. God commanded the man to love his wife, but commanded the woman to submit to her husband. You need to learn to respect your husband. You need to learn to submit to your husband. You may be more intelligent than your husband like Abigail was to Nabal. But yet, you need to learn to respect him. You need to learn to submit to him. You are not to be his teacher by force. No. You are to be humble in all your presentation. Humility, holiness, Hospitality, these three, you must master very well. Discover what he likes. Sell yourself to him. Package yourself and sell yourself to your husband. It's very, very important. Use something that will induce him to come near you. Let him see that there are qualities latent qualities in you which he can make good use of. And you are the only person who can do that. It's very important. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 31, I want to read verses 28 and 29. 
Proverbs, the last chapter of Proverbs, chapter 31. I read verses 28 and 29. There the Bible says, Our children rise up and call her blessed. Our husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. You need to sell yourself to your husband. You need to make yourself indispensable to your husband. It's very important. Number four, take care of your looks. Take care. Your physical appearance is very important to your husband. Be in shape. Be smart. Watch your weight, your fitness, and your appearance must be constantly watched. Every man cares if his wife is out of shape. You need to understand this. Keep fit. It's very, very important. Practice personal and environmental hygiene. There are many women, they have become repulsive to their husbands because of lack of this. They don't take care of their look. God wants you to be smart. I want you to understand this. And then keep him happy. Keep him happy. On the question of hygiene, at your leisure, go and read Deuteronomy chapter 23 from verse 9 to 14. You will see that God wants you to be neat as a woman. Your surroundings to be neat. Your room to be neat. Your kitchen to be neat. Everywhere around you to be neat. It is part of what will sustain your marriage. But don't forget hard neatness of character. Keep him happy. You will do yourself great harm when you make your husband unhappy. When you make your husband unhappy, you will do yourself great harm. In that Proverbs 31, 11 and 12, the heart of her husband simply trusts her, so he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. Seek the good of your husband. It is very important. You may overlook all these little, little things, but there are little things that matter. To sustain your marriage, to solidify your relationship, so that your husband will find you indispensable. He will always want to be in your company. He will always enjoy your presence. It is very important. I know God must have spoken to you as you have listened to me. And I know if you put all these things into practice, you will never regret your relationship. I want to pray for you. Father God, we want to thank you. We want to glorify your name. And so far, Lord, we have been able to deal with certain things. And I pray that you will help the listeners to apply them. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.